Hello guys, welcome back to another idle game tutorial. Um, this is part of the idle game tutorial series, this is episode 10. Today we're going to be doing some code management and optimization. Um, this is some good cleanup because I think the code needs a little bit of work since I've been uh, focusing on the basics. Um, previously we, uh, we did um, good optimization and UI, practice, uh, UI practices. And uh, yeah, let's get right into it. So we're just gonna hop straight into our code because today we're completely dedicating uh, to the code. Um, so anyways, basically we have a lot of stuff that can be cleaned up and shortened and stuff like that. And we're not gonna be really changing anything fundamentally. We're still gonna be using public void update and the major methods. Um, so first of all, we're gonna start with vsync. Uh, it's very important because if you have your uh, your update method running uh, every frame or past that, it will use a lot of CPU. So we're gonna simply just do application dot set frame rate. Oh no, it's application dot target frame rate equals sixty. So this uses vsync to make sure our frame rate is stable at around 60, 60 to 100 is probably its approximate range, but vsync, um, it decreases the CPU usage by a ton. On my game, it was using about 50% until I applied this, it was then using like around 3%, so it's very, very helpful. <clears throat> and make sure it's in the start method so that it'll be used every time you start your game. And you can change this to 15, 30, 60, 120, and maybe 144. Anything between that will be rounded up to the next, so 45 will be rounded up to 60. And um, for if you want a game to still be smooth, then just do 60. A lot of people will say just use 30 since it won't matter, but I personally use 60. And if you have settings in your game, then use it. Uh, it would be nice to choose uh, differently because some people would prefer less. Anyways, we're done with that. Let's get into some code optimization. Um, let's just get rid of some parentheses since it's unneeded. Um, so now we want to look for repetition. Right here. We've seen this multiple times. So we're going to copy and paste this and we're going to make a method out of it. We're going to do public... Um, we're updating a string and let's see we're gonna call it update number oh we're gonna call it our or we're just gonna call it our notation method I guess you can call it whatever you want um so yeah uh, we're going to be importing two things. Um, the first one is going to be our variable double. And then we're also going to have, we're going to call this x. We're also going to import a, a float. No, it's going to actually be a string. I forgot. And that's going to be why. The string is going to be our format because we'll be able to know how many decimals we want on default. So we're going to take this out. Actually, we didn't delete anything, right? Nope, we're good. So basically, we're going to replace this with return. We don't need this right here. And for our else, we're going to return this right here. We don't need any of this extra stuff since we'll have that above. Um, we don't need this else. Because if this is not successful, or if it's not true, then it will run this return statement. So now our y is simply going to go here. Our x is going to replace the coins value. Yeah, what is this? I don't want this. And we're going to remove some of these useless parentheses. Qualifier is redundant. Okay, I guess we don't need our system anymore for some strange reason, even though it was asking for it in a few episodes ago. 
All right, we have our notation method, and it's very short and simple. We don't need all this nonsense up here. So since we're returning our string right here, basically we're gonna take this. Uh, did I come? Nope. We're gonna start here. We're gonna start with this click value text right here. Yeah. Okay, so basically we're gonna replace this right here with the method that we just made. And since it uh, it takes a double, uh, that'll be first. And then the next will be how many decibels, which is going to be F0. And that's it. That's all it is. We just changed this whole five line, uh, six line code to just one. And we can do that for others too. So before we continue, we are going to do something called overriding. So we're going to have some methods that are actually going to need to take it in a float instead of a double. So just in case, we're going to copy and paste it, and we're going to place this double with the float. And that's it. Oh, and also, these have to be mathf. Mathf. And that's it. Um, so, now if we c so now if we do the same exact method, but it's a float, then it'll, it'll override this right here, and it'll call this one right here. Um, yeah, that's it. And that really depends if we need it or not. You can literally do the same thing with ints as well. But, ah, uh, I never use ints. So, alright. Let's get replacing. So next is going to be coins. We have that. You also want to change the beginning text too before you replace everything. Like right here. Uh, we don't have anything after here. And this is going to make the code a lot, a lot cleaner. Alright, so we're in a little uh, tricky situation right here. Actually, no we're not. Never mind. Scratch what I was saying. Let's keep going. Uh, this is an F0 right here. All right, we can delete that. Easy peasy. Mm, let's see, do we have any more? I don't think so. We could delete some of this anyways. All right, so we're good with our text updates. Um. Alright, so we're going to go to the upgrades now. This is going to look a little weird because we just had a whole entire upgrade system and we're about to change it. Awesome. Um, so I'm only going to mess with the main buy click upgrades and the production. Actually, since we have a buy max, I'm going to do the production first. So this looks easy on us. So we're going to make a new method called public void by upgrade. So I'm gonna have to show you something cool when it comes to the editor in in here. What you can do with upgrade or with buttons and methods that have like a that take in a string or something like that. Um, we're gonna do string upgrade ID so we know what upgrade we're buying. And we're gonna make this one P1 and we're gonna make this one P2. Alright, as simple as that. Um, alright, we have our string ID, or our upgrade ID. Sorry, it's 3 in the morning. <laughs> um, so we're going to make a switch case statement, which basically, instead of doing if the string, or if upgrade ID equals P1, then we're going to do this. It's just like a switch, an if-else statement. But it's a lot cleaner and it's easier to visualize and it's easier to do. So, switch. If our upgrade is P1, then we're going to do this stuff right here. All right.
And to end this, we need a break. You can end this right here by returning a, val a value if this was like a public double and you were trying to get a cost from a certain upgrade, then you would use return whatever number. But we're not returning anything, so we're just going to break. And then we're going to add a case. And the reason why I want to add a break is because if we don't, then it'll just keep going. It'll keep running. Uh, we're going to add a P2, which will be here. And we're going to break. That's it. We can get rid of these two upgrades right here. Um, so this is just good for just keeping everything in one method and it just overall looks better. And we can add on to it whenever you want. So we can do C2 for a click upgrade one or two. And we're just going to copy and paste this. And of course, if you wanted to make your own methods to make this look cleaner and less repetitive, you can do that. But I think you guys need, I think you guys understand the concept, I hope. Well, why do we not have a thing right here? All right. Why does it keep doing that? It doesn't look good. All right. So we have our C2 upgrade done. So our max, our max, how are we going to handle this? I think we're basically running the same thing, except we are going to... Let's see, how are we doing this? You know what? We can actually merge this. We can merge this, now that I think about it. We're going to do C1 and C1 max. Alright. So our C1 max is basically just going to be our buy upgrade max. We're going to break. And then our C1 is going to be that. Done. Now nah, to clean stuff up. Cost is defined below. But I isn't it but I broke it. What? Okay, so I guess we gotta do cost one, cost two. <laughs> That's kinda silly. So make sure you change all your variables so that they're different from the one above. Because apparently this break doesn't I guess that doesn't stop it. I'm just gonna replace some stuff real quick. Okay, so now we got rid of a bunch of methods and we just combine it all in one. So we're gonna go back to our editor. And our upgrades should be removed. So we're gonna have to go back to each upgrade and assign a new method which is going to be our buy upgrade and the string for this is going to be c1 so what's the cool thing is that you can literally just put in whatever upgrade you want and if in case you want something if it doesn't have an upgrade you can do default and you can just do debug dot log i'm not assigned to a proper upgrade break basically if your upgrade ID does not match any of these it will be called a default so we're gonna make that C1 the buy max is gonna be C1 max so to make this faster I'm just gonna highlight all my upgrades assign them the buy upgrade click buy max C1 max make sure they match or else it won't work. C2, P1, P2. And we should be good to go. So let's save it and run. So if we buy, it should work. Yep, see, here we go. It's just calling the buy upgrade C1. C1 right here. 
Are they all work? Awesome. One, one, one. Okay. So that was it for uh, code optimization and cleaning up. Uh, if you guys have any questions, leave it down below. Leave a comment down below. And I ho hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and you turn on notifications so you know when the next episode is. Uh, anyways, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy your day. Peace. Yeah. Got me in this party all up in a zone. Hot as Betty's trying to take away my cell phone. Like, come and party. I've been trying to shake you off my mind, but just can't get you off me. Keep it moving. They ain't worth it. Yeah, that's what my father taught me. But for now, I'm going through the motions of letting go. Because my mind's telling me yes, but my heart really don't know. Your heart went dark out of nowhere, yet I still see a glow. So we had the hottest love. Why'd you leave me in the cold?